Hi, this video will show you how to solve an equation using square roots. These are just going to be simple one-step equations to solve, um, just to kind of reaffirm what the square roots do. Um, so just to reiterate what we do in algebra, the first few things that we learn, if we have something like this where we have an equation u plus 6 equals 10, we're going to get rid of that 6. We're going to bring the 6 to the other side of the equation by undoing the addition. How do we undo addition? We undo addition by using subtraction. Um, and there would also be the similar um, situation is if we had a minus 4 equals some number, let's say 12. Again, if we were going to move the 4, the 4 is being subtracted, so we would use addition in this case. We're undoing it. So those are opposites of each other. That's not really a big surprise. Um, without going into a lot of detail, if we had an equation that was multipli I'm sorry, had multiplication in it, then we would division to undo it. And conversely, if we had something that started off with division, we had to undo that, we would use multiplication. What this video is going to concentrate on is if we have something like this, if we have like x squared equals some number, I'm just going to say 9. How do we undo a squaring? How do we undo this? And the answer to that question is we square root it. So if I have this equation, I'm just going to rewrite it because hopefully to make it neater. Um, so this would be an equation, x squared equals 9. How would you show your work? You would put a square root over that and you would put a square root over that. And then the next step, when you square root an x squared, what comes out of that is just a plain x. And then for the 9, it's being square rooted. A lot of people kind of think you divide by 2, which is incorrect. What you want to ask yourself is what number times itself gives you 9. So some number times itself gives you 9, and that answer is 3. In reality, there's actually two numbers times itself that will give you a positive 9. 3 times 3 is a positive 9, but if we have a negative 3, that is also an answer to this equation because a negative 3 times a negative 3 will give you a positive 9. So this is the gist of what we're going to practice, a couple more of these. Um, just The first part was just kind of an intro, so let's move on to another slide here. Um, at the end of this video, I'll take a few minutes to write out all of the um, perfect squares. And if you don't have that list, you might want to copy it down. It's up to you. Although if you have the internet handy there, you just Google it and I'm sure you'll get a list of perfect squares. Um, all right, let's do another one. Let's say that we have an equation and it says a squared equals 121. There is nothing on the side of the a. It's all by itself, except we do have that squared to contend with. So again, what we want to do is to show our work. We want to say, all right, we are square rooting both sides. The square root of a squared becomes a. They undo each other. And the square root of 121, what times itself gives you 121? So 11 is one thing times itself that gives you 121. 11 times 11 is 121. And negative 11 times negative 11 gives you a positive 121. So those are your two answers. Almost any time that you square root both sides of an equation, you're going to get two answers. Um, you don't usually learn that in introductory algebra so much. Um, it it kind of comes up later as you go through a little bit more complex equations. Um, let's do two more. One of them, um, this is one equation where you won't get two answers. So we'll say that we have c squared equals 0. And again, our first step, only step in this case, is we're going to square root it. The square root of c squared is c. And then zero, the only thing that's going to give you zero is zero. Or sorry, the only thing that's going to give you zero when you multiply by your, itself is zero. Um, there's no negative zero. So you can't say negative zero is also an answer. So this is one case where you're only going to get one answer. All right, and just to do one other equation, let's say that we have m squared equals 196. Again, to show your work, you want to square root both sides. The square root of m squared becomes m. Copy down the equal sign. And what number times itself gives you 196? That is going to be 14, but it's also going to be negative 14. All right, and then you're done. Um, well, so now I'm going to just make a list of the perfect squares, like these that come out to be perfect integers. That's what I'm going to give you now. Um, there's tons and tons and tons of numbers that will not come out to perfect little integers, and you just need a calculator. You would have to grab a calculator, find the square root button, type in the number. Sometimes you type in the number and then find the square root button, um, and it will give you the decimal, which is fine. So it's not that you can't find a square root of other numbers. It's just that you um, would need a calculator. Um, so, all right, the square root of 0, the square root of 1, 
the square root of four. How am I getting these numbers under here? Um, what I'm doing, I'm going down in my head and I'm thinking what's zero times zero? That's zero. What's one times one? That's one. What's four, uh, sorry, what's two times two? That's four. What's three times three? That's nine. What's four times four? That's 16. And so those are the answers that you can see to get the integer four, I squared it, and that's gonna be the number under the square root. It's kind of a weird, more complex explanation. Um, it's more intuitive once you think of it, and because it's really long and drawn out when you say what number times itself gives you that answer, it just feels weird. So again, if it might be helpful for you to write them down, even if you can Google uh, this and have a nice list handy, there's actually some value, I truly believe, in writing them down yourself it just kind of sinks into your subconscious a little bit better and you end up kind of knowing them a little bit more than you would expect to. All right, so 11 times 11, that gives us 121. 12 times 12, that's 144. These are really good um, numbers to um, memorize, honestly, especially if you're gonna be taking the PSATs, the SATs, a college placement test, um, the military ASVABs, any of that, I really highly suggest. Um, or if you're just going to do upper level math in high school, it's really, really a good idea to just memorize these. And not only these, but a handful of perfect cubes too. Um, 15, we'll say 2 is 225. Um, 16, that is, sorry, my handwriting is getting messy. Let me undo that one. Um, that equals 16, 2, 8, 9, that's 17 times... 17. That's probably a good, um, actually, let's just go 18 and 19. We'll go up to 20. 20. Uh, let's see, 19, that's 361. 18 times 18, I'm drawing a blank on that one, so I am going to do it over here. 8 times 8 is 64. That's going to give me what? Eight one four nine. That's not right. What did I do? Um, let's see. Eight nine. Oh, that's what I did. Nine. There's a nine there. Seven. I'm trying to rush, and that's not healthy. Eight one. So four two three twenty four. That's right. I knew that. Sorry that took so long. I'm trying to squish it in down here, and that's not always a healthy thing to do. So again, write these down. You can pause this or whatever so the next video doesn't start. Um, but they're definitely really good things to know if you're going to be doing um, upper level math, uh, placement tests, that sort of thing. Even if you have the, like we in here in Massachusetts, we have the MCAS tests. So definitely a good thing to know for the MCAS. It will save you some steps. You'll make connections a lot quicker. So, all right. Thanks. I hope this helped.